Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by. Today we're taking a look at my favorite knives of 2020. Now of course this is just my favorites, this is not necessarily a best of list, but I still think it'd be a lot of fun to get in here and show you guys some knives that I highly recommend. Uh, throw your favorites down in the comments as well, I'd love to hear them. So let's get into it. Alright y'all, so we're going to have four categories today starting with the budget tier. Budget tier is any knife that is $50 and below, followed up by the mid tier which is going to be $50 to $100, the high tier which is going to be $100 and up, and the last tier is just X Factor. doesn't matter what the price range is, it's just it's a knife that has a lot of personality and punch. Um, so let's get into it with the budget tier. And first up, we have the Rough Rider Work Knife with denim micarta handles. Uh, so this came out, I think primarily through Smoky Mountain Knife Works, um, and it's just a cool little swayback knife. And um, swayback's one of those patterns you don't see super often. I know there was the Spidey swayback that came out this year. I actually wasn't super enthused on that knife. Uh, it just wasn't, wasn't hitting me in the way I was hoping it would. But um, still, a, still a cool knife. Um, but in, in any case, a lot of more affordable Swaybacks came out this year, and this was the this was one of them, probably the most affordable Swayback that came out this year. Um, this is a good little knife for the money. It was $17. Currently, they're sold out at um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, but this was the second run. So obviously, it's a run that they uh, it's a knife that they plan on keeping in production. Um, fit uh, fit and finish is is decent for the money. Uh, it's not going to blow you away, but it's not bad. Um, Everything is flush, uh, everything lines up well, the back spring has a couple of areas where it's a little, a little rough, but for the most part it lines up pretty good. Um, the denim is nice, it's not your grippy uh, micarta that you might be used to, say from Kaiser or uh, more of the higher end companies, it's, it's smoothed, it's smoothed over um, like you tend to see on traditionals. Um, but walk and talk is very good, I like it quite a lot, it doesn't quite have a gator snap, but it's not bad. It, it, it closes shut with some authority. I will say there is quite a bit of side-to-side -side play. But honestly, with slip joints, in particular with, um, with traditionals, uh, I am pretty forgiving of, of blade play, as long as it's not so overwhelming that you're feeling it when you're actually cutting. Um, so our blade steel on offer here is for, I believe it's 440A. So not, you know, <laughs> not my favorite steel in the world, but uh, you know what? I would probably take that over 8CR or OS 8. Um, and again, 17 bucks. I mean, come on y'all. Uh, I will take 440A for that. Um, and the other thing is this knife, uh, it'll definitely do some work for you, but um, I think people who are gonna buy this are probably gonna buy this because it's kind of a gentlemanly knife um, at an affordable price point and I don't think you need a crazy steel for that. So overall, I just think the construction's good for the money. Uh, the handles are nice and pretty, um, and they come in well at that price point. The ergos are solid, just how you'd expect ergos to be on a, on a, uh, on a swayback. Um, as Stasa23 said with swaybacks, with that pattern, you either love it or you hate it. I'm firmly in the love it category, but of course, you know, there, there are those of you out there who are gonna hate this pattern. I think it's pretty comfortable though. Uh, fit and finish is, is good for the money um, and it has a lot of personality, you know, so this is my number one choice for my favorite, uh, or number, I should say my option one for my favorite budget knife this year. My favorite budget knife of the year, option two the QSP Penguin. This thing is a stunner for the money. Um, just, it's got so much style and, and personality and it gives you so much for, I believe the list price was 29 bucks. So what we have here are denim micarta handles. Uh, now this has more of a textured uh, feeling to it than the denim micarta on the Rough Rider that we just looked at. Um, action is, Oh my God, action is superb. 
Uh, we have phosphor bronze washers here, um, but they're they're very. I don't know if they were polished or what, but they are. QSP is delivering them in a very smooth configuration, uh, and it'll it won't necessarily drop shut, but it will swing shut if you know what I mean. Um, and you can also middle finger deploy it. <laughs> I say that. Oop. A little bit harder under the phone. Let's try that one more time. There we go. You can middle finger deploy it pretty easily too. Um, probably better than me. <laughs> so anyways, what else we have about this knife that I really like? Deep carry pocket clip. Um, it, the screws are not recessed, but the pocket clip is tucked in this little pocket here and it's reversible to either side. So it's a uh, somewhat ambidextrous knife. You still have the liner lock on this side here, but other than that, um, it's a fairly ambidextrous knife. Uh, ergos are pretty good. They're, they're fairly neutral. Um, as you can see, it's just a straight back kind of shape. Um, no serious finger grooves or anything like that. I'm not a fan of how wide this little parrot's beak is. I think it takes you a little farther back from the blade than I would like. But um, other than that, I think the handles and the ergos are a hit. Um, fit and finish is solid. It's not a, amazing, but it's pretty good. Uh, this spot here is what I always noticed where the micarta seems to swell away from the stainless steel liners. But other than that, everything meets up flush. There's no galling or, uh, or um, burrs or anything like that. So it feels really nice in hand. Uh, blade steel here is D2. Um, and it's, you know, your, your uh, typical D2 like you would see from Civivi or um, the uh, maybe some of Kaiser's Vanguard series. I'm not sure who else is using D2 right now. I know a bunch of the Chinese-based companies are really focused on D2 and 9CR. But uh, yeah, so it's good D2. Blade shape is great. We have a she nice sheep's foot cleavery kind of blade shape here. Comes down to a nice acute point. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a knife for getting a lot of utility style work done. So budget option number two, uh, the QSP Penguin highly recommended. It's, it's, it's just a, a stunning option for the money. All right, y'all, on to the mid-tier. Uh, this, boy, this was close to my favorite knife of the year. Um, really close. Uh, it, honestly, I might have to call it a tie. So this is the Tucson TS-232. Uh, Tucson came out, um, they came out punching hard this year. Uh, they made a lot of excellent designs. Um, their action is superb. I mean, it, it's just as good as anything that you would spend, you know, over $100 on. Uh, the action is excellent. This knife, um, th and this is the issue with Tucson across the board, is that the best way to get a hold of them is usually through eBay. Um, some knife retailers will sell Tucson. I think White Mountain Knives might have sold some. Um, don't quote me on that. Uh, but they're easy to get on eBay. You can also find them on Amazon too. Downside, they ship from China. Your shipping time is going to be a month and beyond. So you definitely have to wait. Um, but they are available for like buy it now pricing or for bidding. I bid, I bid on this one. I ended up getting it for 55. Uh, and I think for that much money, it's, a, it's stunning. Um, a, a screaming deal. So what we have here are titanium handle scales on either side, a titanium backspacer, a milled titanium pocket clip. Obviously the design is a big emphasis here. We have this nice sort of, I, I call it cathedral jigging, but I just call it that because of, it reminds me of church windows. Um, but it, it's, it's a beautiful pattern and the texturing in hand just feels fantastic. Ergos are fine. It's, it's uh, similar to the parrot, or I'm sorry, the penguin. It's a very neutral handle. There's no, uh, obviously there's no finger grooves or anything like that. Um, so very neutral ergos. Um, the blade shape, kind of a leaf blade shape. It's a very unusual shape. Um, they also offered this in a clip point. I kind of prefer this weird spoon shape just because it's so unusual. And, and for me, a lot of the time, weird wins. Sorry about the gunk on the knife. I, I tend to use this one quite a bit. Um, but it is 14C28N, which is my favorite budget steel. I wish we would see more of that. Here's the issue, uh, uh, besides shipping, this is another issue with Tucson, is that particularly with their S90V and 
possibly with their M390, but we know for a fact their S90V isn't being, it's either it's not S90V or it's not being heat treated uh, the way that it should be. Uh, Pete at Cedric and Ada did some testing with it, um, as well as there's a bunch of other channels that have done testing on, S, on their S90V as well, and it's not hitting the numbers that it should be. Uh, so the 14C28N, with it being more of a budget steel, I would find it hard to believe that they would, you know, I don't think, my gut tells me they're not necessarily lying about the steels because why would, why, why even do that? Uh, I guess uh, with S90V, you know, to, there, there's such a demand for that steel that they might want to do it to uh, increase interest. But with something like 14C28N, I, I don't see the motivation for that. So I would imagine this is actually 14C28N. I'm going to do some testing with it just to find out. Um, but anyway, enough about the steel. I just wanted to make sure I got that little disclaimer out the way. Uh, is that you want to do some investigation on the steel on offer. I, any of their 14C28N models, I don't really hesitate uh, on recommending those. It's the higher end steels. I kind of want you to know about that before you go buying them. So, action, as I said earlier, is just astonishing. Uh, this is on uh, bearings. And it also, interestingly enough, there's a takedown video on this. Y'all can go look up as well as on the Parrot. Um, this one has steel washers that act as an interface between the titanium and the bearings to prevent the bearings from uh, running the titanium down. I've never seen that before. It was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, astonishing action. Incredible fit and finish. Everything just fits together beautifully. A little bit finicky to work on, but once you get the hang of it, it's not hard at all. Um, again, you guys can check out my takedown talk where I fully disassemble this uh, and see how it works. So highly recommend uh, Tucson on the, on the 50 to 100 range. Anything higher than 100, do some investigation on, make sure that it seems like a good purchase. But from 50 to 100, I think Tucson is absolutely killing it. All right, y'all, mid-tier option number two. Is anybody really surprised to see this here? I mean, you can't be, right? This is making everybody's year-end list. Um, this is the Ferrum Forge Stinger. Uh, made by Wii or Civivi. I don't know if there's really a difference between the two since Wii owns Civivi. Um, but it, this is an incredibly well-made knife for the money. Um, we're coming in about $90 on these. Uh, they're sold out at a lot of places right now, but it's supposed to be a continuous model, so we should see some future runs on it. Uh, it was available in uh, black, tan and green G10. It was also available in carbon fiber at first, but that run's already over and I don't think they're going to redo that. So what we have here are uh, very nice letterbox G10 uh, scales with stainless steel liners. The stainless steel liners have been crowned, so it sits in your hand really comfortably. Honestly, this is probably the ergonomic win of the year for me. Um, this, knife, this knife in hand is just astonishingly good. Um, my small hands, even my, my pinky does feel like it's hanging out there just a little bit, but if you have larger hands, it probably definitely would be. That's the only thing that kind of gets me about the knife. I wish that kind of went a little bit further. Other than that, man, this thing is a win. Um, so our steel here is Nitro V. Very cool steel. Don't see it too often um, other than on fixed blades. As far as I know, this and the Mass Drop Perpetua are the only folding knives I know that have Nitro V in production. Um, very cool steel, performance is great, uh, and the action is really nice. I have not taken this one down yet, there will be a video on it, um, but it's, it's uh, pivoting on bearings. So great action, you can middle finger flip it thanks to that finger groove. I will try, you can thumb it, but um, I am not good at it, I will try it real quick. Let's see, almost. Um, you can do that. Uh, once you get used to it, it's a little harder, but you can definitely slow roll it, so that's nice. A lot of options for this. It's a great fidgeting knife. Uh, that blade shape is absolutely gorgeous. I love the acid wash, uh, if that's what that is. It looks like an acid wash to me, and that also continues on the liners as well. Pocket clip is awesome. Uh, here we see the tang of the clip, if, <laughs> if you want to call it that, is recessed in the G10, and the screw holding the pocket clip in place is also recessed, so it's just a seamless in and out of your pocket. Uh, backspacer here, I believe, is also G10, and it nicely uh, covers up the blade there, so no concerns there. So highly recommend this knife for the money. Um, I think it's uh, 
punching above its pay grade just a little bit. It's, it's definitely a fair price. Um, for a cool steel and a very well thought out design, I think it's an absolute win. All right, our first entry for the high tier. Oh boy, I love this one. Uh, this is the Collector Knives uh, collaboration with Viper Knives out of Italy. They're uh, sway back. And this thing, oh my gosh, I love it. So what we have here is a modern traditional. Um, it's a slip joint and it's using that classic sway back pattern. However, the materials are a little bit more on the modern side. Our blade steel is M390. Uh, we have titanium, uh, titanium handles with micarta covers and the micarta is a canvas micarta, very nice and grippy, uh, feels awesome in hand. Again, ergos are what you would expect of a swayback, so if you're not a swayback fan, uh, you're not gonna like it. Um, but if you are like me, oh boy, th this knife feels great in hand. We have a nice crowned um, back spring here, which is typical of what you would see from Viper or Lion Steel, those Italian companies. They, make, they do such beautiful work seamlessly meets the blade here. I love that. So the blade also carries on that crown spine. Bit of a swedge here at the top that looks very nice. Um, your opening method is of course a nail nick. Um, would it have been nice with a long pull? Yeah, maybe, but how often do you see long pulls on sway backs? It, it doesn't really work for the style of the knife in my opinion. I like nail nicks. I might be in the minority, but I do enjoy them. Um, this can be disassembled. I have not done it yet. I'm debating on whether I want to do a takedown talk on this simply because um, I, I reserve my modern knives for takedown talk. Uh, and I, granted, this is a modern knife, but it's a modern traditional, so I'm not sure if disassembling a traditional is going to be really relevant to anybody. If anybody's interested in seeing a disassembly of it, let me know and I, I will give it a shot. As I understand it, this is pivoting on bronze washers as well. It's not just uh, sitting, the blade's not just sitting in there by itself. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we have M390 here, which of course is an awesome steel, uh, great, great for the money uh, here, which um, they're asking 130 for this piece, and I think that's absolutely a fair price. Uh, really well finished micarta, unbelievable fit and finish. The, the Italian companies, they just, they, it's grand slams with them uh, in regard to fit and finish every time. I've never handled a knife by Viper or Lion Steel that wasn't just beautifully made. Um, the walk and talk is pretty good. Again, like the um, Rough Rider work knife, it's not a gator snap until you get about there. So it's, it takes a minute, but um, I really enjoy the action of it. Uh, great little knife and highly recommended. So the Viper knives, uh, collector knives, sway back. Uh, check it out. Also, collector knives, they do a lot of cool collaborations. So it's fun to just go to their website and see what they've got cooking over there. A lot of cool stuff, so check them out as well. All right, y'all, high tier option two. And for me, uh, this is my favorite knife of the year. This is the Spyderco Sage 1 in Maximet. This knife, my goodness, um, coming from Spyderco's Taichung Taiwan factory, the fit and finish is insanely good. Uh, there's no, no areas where that, those stainless steel liners are not perfectly meeting the G10 handles. Uh, it feels amazing in hand. I had never handled a Sage 1 until I had this one and I'm astounded. Like it, it could be, honestly, I think this is my favorite ergonomic Spyderco, or favorite Spyderco in terms of ergonomics. Because usually my issue with Spydercos are that these big finger choils, when I grip them in a, in a standard grip, it doesn't feel right to me. I feel too far away. But for some reason with this knife, the standard grip feels fantastic to me. And then if I want to choke up, I can. Um, but this just, I, I love this grip. You can also flip it around pretty easily. It feels good there too. Um, and it, it's just a really well-designed knife. Of course, this one's designed by Sal. You can see his, his uh, design mark right there. And uh, the handles, as I mentioned earlier, uh, G10 handles. Stainless steel liners, it, I was kind of bummed they weren't titanium, but let me see if I can show this to you guys. The skeletonization in there is astounding. Like there is so much 
uh, weight reduction going on in there. Um, really well done. This thing, I believe it falls below the ounce per inch uh, marker. So you fans of light, lighter carry will really enjoy this. It also disappears in the pocket. Only thing to consider is that it is quite wide in the pocket, but your hand just kind of swoops down past it. I, it's never bothered me once. We have the deep carry wire pocket clip here, and it is the nice one where it folds over back behind the screw. Uh, so it sits quite well in there. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, blade is Maximet. Uh, Maximet is a super, uh, super steel. It's a micro melt steel, a little bit different from your powder metallurgy and way different from ingot steels. Um, so yeah, fantastic edge retention, just out of this world. Um, a little chippy, I believe. It's, it, again, I haven't done any hard testing with this, but it's supposed to be a bit chippy. Um, check out, uh, my first recommendation for steel test is always gonna be Pete at Cedric and Ada Gear and Outdoors. He has a, a very extensive list of steel tests that he has done, and Maximet is one of them. And I believe Maximet is one of the highest uh, numbers in terms of edge retention that he ever did. Deployment is on phosphor bronze washers, and this is where I really fell in love with this knife. These washers are the smoothest I've ever handled on a production knife. I mean, it's just, it's just absurd. The fact that you can swing it shut, which is not normal on washers, as far as I know, uh, it's just quite good. Um, it just glides. And so you can spidey flick it, of course, thumb flick it. Got a nice big locking leaf here. Another thing that I really like, it's not just a thin little lock bar, it is a wide locking leaf. And you can also, of course, spidey drop it. Great knife. Um, these are coming in right at, I think, 206. Um, I think it, it is a high asking price, but the fit and finish is there, the quality is there, the steel is there. You don't see Maximet all that often. And for this to be a production piece from Taiwan, uh, I was just very excited when this was announced. Construction is all T9. Uh, very strong construction, very simple, but very sturdy. So uh, we have two backspacers here, of course, and uh, the uh, pocket clip is mounted into one of the backspacer screws. So it's a very sturdy, simple design. So yeah, knife, knife of the year for me, my, my favorite. Um, not saying it's the best for the money, just saying that this was my favorite of the year. Okay, our very last tier. There's only one option here. This is X Factor. What we have here, guys, is the Kershaw Lucha. Now, y'all can't tell me that this thing is not absurdly cool. I mean, look at that. So we have a production ballet song from Kershaw, and it is outstandingly, outstandingly well done. Um, stainless steel uh, handles, so it's not light. It is quite heavy. Um, but if you're at all interested in the ballet song, this is coming in about, I think, 119 for the money. Uh, if you're familiar with the ballet song market, a good ballet song is not cheap. Um, and uh, for the money, this is absolutely astounding. Uh, I'm not a ballet song reviewer, um, so please don't <laughs> you take my opinion on, on this with, uh, with a grain of salt, which is why I put it in the X Factor, um, just because it's a cool knife to me. Um, but, you know, Definitely check out professional uh, Bally Song reviews uh, for more information on it. What I love about it though is just it, just, it just oozes cool. I mean, this looks like something that the Mandalorian would carry, you know? I mean, like, look at the milling, uh, the milling pattern on the stainless steel handles here is just beautiful. Um, the nipple up here, which is, this is called a, a nipple, uh, the construction up here is really weird and really cool. I really like it. Um, we have, of course, we have a, uh, a, um, a latch here to keep the blade enclosed. Um, a lot of guys who are really into ballys will remove that just to make it easier to get the blade flipping. Um, but I like having it there when I want to lock it in. By the way, when, it is, when the handle's in the locked position, there is absolutely no play whatsoever. Uh, the blade is swinging, flipping, spinning, <laughs> whatever, you wanna, whatever you wanna call it, on, uh, on bearings, and the action is quite smooth. I'm not um, not good at flipping. I'm just good at not even good at basic openings. I'm just learning basic openings. I do carry this a lot though, mostly because of the blade length. I live in a state where I can carry damn near any any blade length I want. Fortunately, 
so this does get carried quite a lot. But we are at about four and a half inches here of 14C28N. I love that blade shape, just so odd and, and uh, unusual and cool. Now obviously the shape is designed to fit inside the handle, so it does have kind of a narrow profile. Um, but golly, uh, you can't tell me that doesn't look cool. And uh, here, we, here we see as well, this is a uh, USA made Kershaw. And Kershaw's USA made offerings, they, they're all, they tend to be home runs pretty, pretty often. And uh, that, that, that goes true here as well. Very cool design. Um, I just think it's so awesome that Kershaw did this. A, 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 an affordable, relatively affordable, um, USA made uh, ballet song. X Factor win goes to Kershaw. All right, guys, thank you all so much for stopping by and watching. It's been a hell of a year, as we all know, but in the knife world, <laughs> it actually wasn't a bad year. We had some pretty sweet stuff. Obviously, I'm not a huge reviewer, so I don't have the resources to get as many knives uh, in hand as I would like, but these were all outstanding to me. So just a quick recap, our uh, budget option one, the uh, Rough Rider Work Knife um, in Denim Micarta for 17 bucks. Option two in the budget arena, the QSP Penguin for 29 in uh, Rough Denim Micarta and D2. Um, Mid-tier, the Tucson TS-232 in 14C28N and Titanium for roughly 55. Um, Mid-tier option two, the Ferrum Forge Stinger, Nitro V Steel, G10 handles, uh, stainless steel liners, Great fit and finish, roughly $90. Best ergos of the year, in my opinion. Uh, high tier option one, the Collector Knives, Viper Knives, uh, Swayback in Micarta, Titanium, and M390 Blade Steel. Excellent, excellent modern traditional. And uh, high tier option two, and my favorite knife of the year, the Sage One and Maximet. Um, just an outstand outstandingly well-made knife. And lastly, the X Factor, the Fun Factor, the Cool Factor, the Kershaw, oops, there we go, <laughs> and, and my unprofessional flipping skills, the Kershaw Lucha. So thanks, guys, thanks again, guys, for stopping by. I hope you uh, have a wonderful day, and I will see you in 2021, and I'm very confident we're all going to have a much better year. You guys take care, and I'll see you next year.